welcome to the Daily Fantasy Cafe podcast. I am your host, Josh Shepherdson, also known as at BChad50 in the world of Twitter. And I'm here to kick off the Daily Fantasy Baseball division previews. And we're going to kick things off with the always interesting American League East. It's a division that uh, has uh, some really interesting projected win totals. It projects to be uh, hotly contested. The lowest win total projected for that division is the Rays with 79 and a half wins. And the highest projected win total is that of the Red Sox at 85 and a half wins. So we're talking about a division that almost all the teams project to finish at 500 or better, or at least in that general vicinity. So there's depth here, there's talent here. And uh, those projections come from, uh, uh, the betting totals come from Pinnacle Sports for those that are wondering. And uh, basically you've got a very loaded division and one that features some interesting home ballparks, namely for home run hitting. Uh, per stat corner, Camden Yards offers a left-handed home run ballpark factor of 128 and an exactly neutral uh, 100. Basically, for those who aren't familiar with ballpark factors, it's set to 100, 100 is neutral. Anything that is above or below is one percentage point above or below. So it, it amplifies home runs to left-handed batters by 28%. Yankee Stadium is an even more friendly home run venue with left-handed batter home run park factors of 131, a right-handed factor of 132. Rogers Center is another homer dome, basically. 125 to lefties, 129 to righties. Then you got a couple ballparks that uh, actually reduce home run hitting. Fenway really kills left-handed power, 66 home run factor. Uh, but you got the uh, Green Monster out there to pepper for doubles and triples. So there's a little bit of give and take there. It, it is not a terrible situation for hitters to uh, be in. Right-handed batters only get docked uh, one percentage point. It, it's 99 for their ballpark factor. And uh, Tropicana is basically the one park that you can feel comfortable throwing a fly ball pitcher into with park factors of 85 and 89 for uh, home runs for lefties and righties, respectively. So if you're a fly ball pitcher, this is not the division to be pitching in. And uh, you'll want to be cognizant of that when you're setting your daily lineups. Make sure you know what ballpark's being played in and uh, recognize that if, if it's a fly ball pitcher, you're probably going to want to avoid most of these ballparks. Uh, this division has some legitimate top shelf stars in it. You've got guys like Adam Jones of the Orioles, Jose Bautista, Edwin Encarnacion, and Josh Donaldson of the Blue Jays. Uh, Jose Reyes, maybe not in that star category anymore, but he is one of the best offensive options at shortstop. Uh, the Red Sox still feature Big Poppy, David Ortiz. They've got emerging youngster like uh, Mookie Betts on their roster. They've got some depth. Then you've got uh, more old guard like Evan Longoria. Uh, you got Masahiro Tanaka with the Yankees. So we're, we're talking top shelf talent in this division. You've got more emerging youngsters as well, and Kevin Gosman, Jake Odorizzi, Drew Smiley, uh, Daniel Norris, perhaps, a guy like Steven Souza of the Rays. And then you got switch hitting catcher Matt Wieters coming back, who showcased his skills early last year, really looked like he was turning a corner, and then was unfortunately sidelined for the season. Uh, as a result of having to undergo Tommy John surgery. So there, there's talent here. There's talent from top to bottom. You've got some, some older players like Dustin Pedroia, Carlos Beltran, and Chase Headley who can provide some value, who they're reliable. You know what you're looking at. And uh, basically, if you go team by team, you've, you've got some, some talent in Baltimore. We're, we're going to kick things off with them. You've got Travis Snyder as a potential breakout candidate. He really started to blossom in the second half of last season. He's a guy on that team that I think is really going to provide them left-handed power. And uh, he moves from a ballpark that suppressed home runs to one that amplifies them. As I noted, 128 park factor, that, that's, that's a big boost for his value, especially if he's able to, to uh, rein in the strikeouts like he did in the second half of last season. You got an emerging pitcher in the name of uh, Kevin Gosman. He's got a nice splitter. If he can really lean on that and pick up a few more punch outs. He could really emerge as a interesting daily game option at across sites at DraftKings where strikeouts are rewarded more heavily and, and at FanDuel where the Orioles are going to be favored to win quite a few games this year. 
and he's going to be on the hill as a favorite uh, fairly often this year. So Gossman's a name to keep an eye on. They've got some less exciting options, but but options nonetheless in the form of J.J. Hardy, uh, Chris Tillman, if the matchup is right. And, and there's depth on this roster. Adam Jones is really the offensive star. There are some red flags in his profile that that I don't love. He doesn't work walks, but he's, he makes his his uh he makes it work basically and he's been a very very good offensive performer problem is his outfield is deep and uh usually you're going to want to find some value there maybe spend a little bit more heavily at, at other positions Manny Machado with third base is interesting he's always been a highly thought of prospect and young young player even when he lost his prospect status he missed time last year due to injury if the light goes on for him I mean the sky's the limit so He's a very talented option there. You got Steve Pierce coming off of a surprising emergence as an older player, but a lot of the underlying stats look, look favorable. They look legitimate, legitimate. Uh, I would expect he may see his total numbers drop a little bit uh, with ex extended uh, right-handed pitcher exposure, but he's a guy that you want to use against lefties anyway. So there's talent in Baltimore. If you go to and look at New York, it's a little bit older team. Masahiro Tanaka is the star there. As long as his elbow holds up, He's basically the best name on that team. He's a guy that can carry teams on sites that reward uh, strikeouts. He's, he's a stud that you want to get in your lineup at, at DraftKings, especially when he has a favorable lineup uh, that he's facing. And uh, the strikeouts are going to be plentiful for him. He's a guy that I really like. There's some interesting names in that rotation as well. Michael Pineda is another guy that I like. Uh, injury short in season, but you know what? He pitched well after missing all of the season before. So it was promising. I, I like what's there. I'm not buying into CC Sabathia coming back and, and performing at a high rate this year. His velocity was down. He worries me a little bit. The lineup's older. You got Carlos Beltran, who I do think is in store for a rebound. He played hurt last year. A healthy Beltran is older. Uh, it's possible that he doesn't pick it up. But he's a guy that I'm going to invest in early in the season because his price is going to be suppressed as the result of the down season. And he's going to hit in a favorable lineup slot for them. So I like the switch hitting Beltron. I will use him some. I'm not as keen on some of his other veteran teammates like Brian McCann and Mark Teixeira. Both guys struggled mightily with the shift last year. Both do have above average power, so they are GPP plays if you're looking to chase a homer. But know that they're not the strongest cash game plays as a result of their low batting averages. And uh, those, those are the name players uh, to some extent on there. Jacoby Ellsbury is another star, but as an outfielder, the matchup just has to be right. He, he's a better season-long option than daily option as well. Uh, Brett Gardner, ditto on him. He, he is a good stolen base contributor. His power uh, exceeded expectations last year. I expect a bit of regression, but you know what? It wasn't an entire fluke. It doesn't look like the power outburst. So he's probably going to retain some of those gains. And uh, the middle infield is nothing that you really want to mess with in New York. Steven Drew, D.D. Gregorius, no thank you for the most part, but Chase Headley at the hot corner looks pretty good. There, there's options there uh, for the most part. They're more of the middle tier and matchup-based options, but you do have a star in Masahiro Tanaka, and you have a very good player in Jacoby Ellsbury. Moving on to the Blue Jays, this is the lineup in the division that, that excites me the most. You got some big left-handed stack potential with Josh Donaldson, Jose Bautista, Edwin Encarnacion, all absolutely crushing left-handed pitching. They all bring top shelf power and great plate discipline to the plate. So you're talking about guys that are GPP plays. You're also talking about cash games plays. Jose Reyes is a well above average offensive player at uh, comparatively to his other shortstop peers. I mean, shortstop's a, a wasteland for shortstop. So I really like Reyes again this year. First base could be interesting. Uh, just or first base or designated hitter, depending on where Justin Smoke plays. He's a guy that could emerge as a breakout candidate. Remember what this team did, uh, coaxing every ounce of talent out of Jose Batista. I mean, Batista was nothing when he was in Pittsburgh. He showed some promise, it, basically in batting practice, but it just didn't translate to the games. They unlocked his talent, and uh, I'm not saying that Justin Smoke is going to be Jose Batista 2.0, but between him and Edwin Encarnacion and getting a little bit out of uh, Colby Rasmus, I think that the seeds are there for him to possibly be good. So he's a guy to keep an eye on. The rotation isn't uh, great. R.A. Dickey is basically a GPP-only pitcher. As a knuckleballer, you just don't know what you're going to get. That ball could be floating and missing bats, or it could be sailing in there and right in the wheelhouse of the hitter. 
So if his knuckleball's working, he's a great GPP play because he's got a chance to miss a lot of bats, pile up strikeouts, pitch deep into the game, get a decision, get a favorable decision, get a win. But he's also a risky play because if that knuckleball's not dancing, then he is basically a sitting duck that's going to get hammered. So Dickey uh, is probably the most noteworthy name in the rotation in terms of uh, household name recognition. But uh, Daniel Norris is the guy that I'm, I might be most excited about. He punched out a ton of minor league hitters last year. He's been very good in the spring. He looks to be a member of the rotation as a result, at least in part, of Marcus Stroman going down for the year, opening up a rotation spot, making it a little bit clearer for him. I like Daniel Norris. Uh, Aaron Sanchez is another young arm that could be interesting this year. He was very good out of the bullpen, but he has uh, had some issues with control at times in the past. So he's not a guy that I would trust early, but he's a guy that could emerge as a uh, candidate for, for daily teams. Moving on to the Red Sox, the Red Sox have a uh, slightly older lineup in, in, at parts with Mike Napoli, David Ortiz, Dustin Pedroia, guys that you know, guys that have track records, uh, and, and they're all solid still. The name that I'm most excited about is Mookie Betts, who projects to hit leadoff. This guy's fantastic. He has a plate discipline that is just unheard of for a player of his of his age that moved as quickly as he did. He he zoomed through the minors last year. He got off to a slow start in, in his professional uh, career a couple of years ago, but he really turned it on last year, and he looks legit. Uh, basically, everyone and their brother singing his praises from beat writers to coaches to uh, fantasy gamers like myself. Uh, Mookie Betts is the, looks like the real deal to me. Uh, Shane Victorino, he could occasionally get the start at the top of the order, but at this point, Mookie Betts looks to have served that up. So it's nice to see that the Red Sox are leaning in the more favorable daily fantasy uh, direction for, for us. A name that could emerge as the season goes on when the aforementioned Shane Victorino inevitably ends up sidelined with an injury. It's basically uh, there's death taxes and a Shane Victorino injury. That Those are things that you can count on. When that happens, Rusney Castillo is a guy that could be interesting. He'll probably hit down order initially. But he has some power. He has some speed. Uh, he, the Cuban it, it doesn't have a lot of big league experience. He, he got a taste. He got that cup of coffee last year. And he, sh he showed out very well. So he's a guy that I like. Uh, looking around the diamonds, Andrew Bogarts could emerge as a, a, a well above average shortstop. Uh, very highly regarded prospect. Just didn't quite do what people expected him to do last year. But you have to remember, he's extremely young. And uh, like a guy that I talked about earlier in the podcast, Manny Machado, when the light goes on, uh, it's going to go on and it's going to be, it's going to shine bright for Bogart. So I like Bogart. Uh, he's actually uh, one of my favorite young players in the game, but, but it remains to be seen if he's really going to uh, take that big step forward. At uh, first base, you got Mike Napoli, crushes lefties. He's a guy that you're going to want to get in there against them. And uh, behind the plate, there, there's just not a lot that you're going to you're going to want to trot out there. Uh, neither catcher is a, a uh, offensive asset. So look elsewhere. The rotation has some promise at sites like FanDuel where you're chasing wins, but it's not an overly exciting group. Wade Miley moves from the National League to the American League. He can keep most of his strikeout gains. He's a guy that might be able to punch out over 20% of the batters he faces. He could be okay. Uh, be careful of right-handed heavy lineups that, that might be able to pummel him like the uh, in-division in rival, uh, the Toronto Blue Jays. Other names, Justin Masterson, no thank you. He's got some proving to do. He was terrible last year. Joe Kelly may think he's going to win the American League Cy Young. He's made the claims. You don't have to buy into those claims. No thank you. I'll pass on Kelly. Uh, and uh from top to bottom, you're really looking at this 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 lineup more so than their their pitching staff. And wrapping things up in the division, we're going to look at the Tampa Bay Rays. This is a team that's pretty much changing from year to year, and that's that's the product of being a small market club that has to be cash conscious. They shipped out Will Myers this off season, and they bring in a very exciting young outfielder in uh, Steven Souza. He was a late bloomer. He was old for his love. Uh, the upper minors levels last year. We're still talking about a 25, 26 year old who absolutely crushed the international league. He's a guy that I really like. I'm going to probably grab early and roll the dice with because his price is unlikely to be reflective of his true level talent. He could struggle. I mean, sometimes some of these older guys that, that produce against the upper minor league pitching just don't quite have the chops for the big leagues, but I'm buying in. Desmond Jennings is moderately interesting. 
uh, depending on where he slots in the order. He's typically been their leadoff hitter, but the club may opt for John Jay. So there, drop Jennings into a more uh, RBI friendly position. He's got a little bit of power, uh, good speed. He didn't steal bases at a high rate last year, but he, he can pick some up. So there's some fantasy points to be had there. Emily Gloria is still the name in the lineup. He hammers left-handed pitching. When he faces a southpaw, you really want to get him in your lineups. He He's okay against right-handed pitching. If the matchup's just right, maybe he's facing a right-hander with reverse platoon splits. You can give him a look. But uh, more or less, you really want to get Longo in there against lefties, especially if his price is dragged down just a smidge by uh, his numbers against right-handed pitching. Guys like Kevin Kiermeyer have some interest. John Jaso, these are guys that have – uh, notable platoon splits. You're going to want to use them against right-handed pitching only. Jason is unlikely to even play against uh, lefties. He's going to be catcher eligible most at most sites, but he's been he's going to be probably used almost exclusively as the team's designated hitter. The rotation's got some interesting pieces. If Alex Cobb is healthy, which it sounds like the forearm issue is. Uh, almost resolved. It doesn't sound like it's going to be anything major. He's the the crown jewel of that rotation. He gets ground balls. He gets punch outs. He stays in the strike zone. He's a guy that you can use at basically any ballpark. Uh, you don't have to worry about any of these homer domes because he's not a guy that induces a lot of fly balls. So you can count on him. Drew Smiley was was a nice acquisition in the David Price trade. He succeeded with the Rays. The biggest thing to note with him is he does have a sizable platoon split. So Keep an eye out for uh, using him against right-handed heavy lineups. You, you don't want to do that until he at least shows that he can do a better job of getting righties out. He is death on lefties, though. So if he's facing a lefty stack lineup or the heart of the order is left-handed, uh, go ahead and use Drew Smiley, especially at home where uh, his ballpark suppresses runs and suppresses home runs. So I like Drew Smiley some this year. Jake Odorizzi is not a ground ball-inducing pitcher. He does get a lot of fly balls, so he's probably better suited at home. You're not going to want to use him in some of the other American League East parks, but he gets strikeouts. He stays in the strike zone. Doesn't have overwhelming stuff. He has a deep arsenal, and that's helped him punch out batters. I like Odorizzi some this year. Matt Moore could be back over the summer, should be back possibly in June. He's recovering from Tommy John surgery. He's a guy who I'm really going to keep tabs on. His strikeout rate when he was coming up through the minors was high. It was high to begin his big league career, but it waned a little bit. His control waned, and uh, – his surface stats were not as glowing as his underlying stats suggested they should be. So if he comes back, if the control is improved after undergoing Tommy John, who knows, maybe the control issues could have been the result of pitching through some elbow discomfort. I, I, I don't know. Matt Moore knows his body better than I do. So keep an eye on Matt Moore. And uh, basically anybody that ends up in this rotation could have value due to their home park. But because the Rays are projected to win 79 and a half games, they may not be the greatest source of wins for these guys. So that's going to wrap it up for the American League East preview. Let me suggest hopping on Daily Fantasy Cafe, where you can read each of the American League East team previews by clicking on the MLB tab. You'll find the, the teams there. You'll get more in-depth knowledge, uh, a little deeper look at each lineup, each pitching rotation, the ballpark factors, uh, catcher framing grades, which are, are interesting if you're trying to figure out which, which catchers you really want behind the dish when you're going to start one of these starting pitchers, they're helpful. And uh, there's more teams up as well right now. Get over there, start checking those out. Uh, thank you very much for joining me for today's pod. I will be back to bring you another division team preview. We'll be looking at the American League Central next. So do stay tuned and do check into the Daily Fantasy Cafe every day where we have great information for MLB and NBA if you're an NBA gamer. Get over there now, get some good advice, win some cash. Take care.